man is stopped by the police at 2 a.m. and asked where he is going at this time of night. He replies, I'm on my way to attend a lecture about alcohol abuse and its effects on the human body as well as smoking. And the officer asks, really? Who would be giving a lecture at this time of night? And the man replies, well, sir, that would be my wife. Friends, will you go to God in prayer with me? We come to you, God, this morning, praying, hoping that you will once again bless us. Bless these words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts. All we can hope for is that they simply be acceptable. Amen. Friends, I know that you have probably heard this text before. This text about Jesus' suffering. This scripture about the foreshadowing, for the disciples at least, of Jesus' death. This scripture where Peter will deny him. This scripture where Jesus tells the disciples to pick up their cross, to bear it. Mary, I see you leaning in because I know this scripture is familiar to you. That part, this part where we pick up our crosses is used a lot. Um, I know my grandmother used to say things like, well, that's just my cross to bear. And we'll get to that in a bit. I'm going to do this sermon a little bit differently than I normally do. But that's not what I want to focus on this morning. And I've preached this scripture or this text. I can't count the number of times. And I still find new things to see and to hear. And the Holy Spirit invites me to see and hear new things. Um, we've got some beautiful trails around here, and I know that some of you hike these trails or have hiked them. Some of y'all know I went for a hike at Harper's Ferry on Christmas Day. I don't know if you remember how cold it was on Christmas Day, and it was really cold here on Christmas Day. Harper's Ferry is called the psychological, or what feels like the midpoint to through hikers on the Appalachian Trail. It's not the physical middle, but the physical middle is not much to see. My friend and I did about a six mile hike. And I'll tell you, I'll say it once again, it was cold. I mean, not Iowa cold or Minnesota cold or probably even Idaho cold, but it was what do we say, West Virginia, Maryland cold. It was about 25 degrees. My jeans had holes in them because I thought, what, it's not gonna be that bad. And my face was freezing after that six mile hike by the time we got back to the car. But oh my, was that hike holy. Perhaps maybe I was just delirious, but I felt the divine with me that day amidst all that vastness of nature and the frigid temperatures. It got me thinking about a book I had read years ago that was eventually turned into a movie. Perhaps you've heard of it. It's called Wild, From Lost to Found on the Pacific Crest Trail. It's written by Cheryl Strayed. At 22, Cheryl Strayed thought she'd lost everything. In the wake of her mother's death, her family scattered and her own marriage was soon destroyed. Some of us have went through some similar things, maybe not at 22, right? Four years later, with nothing more to lose, she made the most impulsive decision of her life. I've made some of those decisions, right? With no experience of, or training, driven only by blind will, or just being 22, I think, you know, she would hike more than a thousand miles of the Pacific Crest Trail from the Mojave Desert through California and Oregon to Washington State, and she would do it alone, told with a suspenseful style, 
Wilde captures the, ter the terrors and pleasures of one young woman forging ahead against all odds on a journey, maddening, strengthened, and ultimately it healed her. If you haven't seen it or read the book, it's really great. I love it. So I want to talk about how this story, Cheryl's story, relates to what Jesus is talking about in denying ourselves. Because sometimes I think we get this wrong. Sometimes I think that Je we think that Jesus means we have to suffer in this scripture, right? Maybe I'm wrong here, but I think I've got a little bit of something. At the beginning, at least in the movie, and when you read the book, you can kind of picture it in your mind's eye. We see her leaving this motel. It's kind of a cruddy little place, right? Heading out on the trail with a pack that is almost as big as she is. And if any of you have daughters, and Debbie told me a story about Megan um, bringing down an air conditioner, I see, right? Bringing down this giant air conditioner. And it's kind of similar. Um, Cheryl's got this pack, and it's a, she's 22, and my daughter's 21, so I can see this, right? She's got this pack, and it is as big as she is. And I, you know, how many of you went on these trips and you, you know, you think you need everything you want to pack for and I you know it's like diaper bags right you want to pack for every little instance that can go wrong right so she has it's comical almost that this little human because Reese Witherspoon plays stray in this movie and Reese Witherspoon is a tiny little human you know from Tennessee right um so she is struggling against the weight of it all from the minute she leaves her motel to go hike this treacherous journey so it's like she's up against herself even though she thinks she's just prepared and I watched that scene again this week in preparing for this because I just felt nudged all week long that that following Jesus is a journey I mean I guess I've felt this for a while right and it reminded me of a time or times in my life when I felt that I had to do it all when I felt that I needed to be prepared for everything. And don't get me wrong, I've always had Jesus. Like I was a camp kid, I was baptized super early, um, but I still, you know, only for emergencies, right? You know, I only needed Jesus for emergencies because otherwise I had plans A, B, C, D, and so on. But as the movie or the book continues, Cheryl lets go of possessions. She's reading her book and she rips pages out of chapters that she's read and uses them for kindling. She starts listening to the advice of fellow travelers to lighten her load, right? Her boots were too small as her feet started to swell from the journey and we see her lose a toenail and it's, it's not great to watch, let me tell you. And someone along the trail asks her if she got her boots at REI and they tell her that, she'll, that if she calls them, they'll send her a new pair on the trail. How cool is that? Cheryl dies a little bit to herself and lives a bit more to the trail, to the divine, to other travelers and comes out stronger and more whole. And I wonder what does it look like when we let go of control? And I don't remember which group we were talking about in our Lenten journey this week, but what does it look like when we let go of control in our lives and live into the fullness of allowing Jesus to take control. Well, for me, it meant losing a lot of material possessions in a move this year. And some tears happened, right? I mean, some of you were on the other end of that phone call. But it also meant a lot of joy. I had no idea what was on the other side of this call, and really neither did y'all, right? But it also meant meaningful work and the adventure of some life-changing vision of which we're in kind of the middle of. You all have now met some folks that are with Alliance Q and we're gonna change some things, but we're really just at the beginning of how this is all gonna change. I ordered new hiking boots from REI yesterday. To be so close to all these beautiful trails and not take advantage seems like a total waste. I wanted to buy them right then and there, 
but they didn't have my size. The person helping me was super helpful. I told them about our sweet little church and how I ended up here. My new friend who had taken a lot of adventures looked at me with a mouth slightly agape as I told our story. Funny that an adventure seeker thinks our story is quite adventurous. Friends, here's the thing, denying ourselves and taking up the cross, it's a little dangerous. But Jesus isn't asking us to do it alone. He's asking us to do it with the divine co-creating and the divine within us and the divine within those we meet. Think about it, the alternative, the going it alone, it's exhausting, you know? Letting go and allowing others to care for us and to care for others in the work of kingdom building where each person we meet is our kin, right? I looked at, speaking of following the Holy Spirit, I was waiting for my pizza the other day, which I had to cut, which was kind of rough. Um, Manhattan pizza, I've really come to love up the road for me. Their system was down. So I drove around for a half an hour waiting um, to get my pizza. And I turned into a church parking lot up on Frederick Road and they had a free pantry. Sharing God's kingdom with what seems like their goal is Latino and Latina families because they had references to local places of assistance that were printed in both English and Spanish. Kingdom building work to where we all can flourish. It makes for community, for shalom, and it burdens, it makes the burdens lighter all around. That's not to say there won't be tears and heartbreak, there are going to still be miscarriages, possessions lost, death of loved ones, depression seasonally, and anxieties over things we cannot change. But shared suffering is just that. It's shared. And when we're in it together, it's less lonely. The same with joy. It's magnified when we share it with one another. So as we lighten our load to lean into God's vision, what are we letting go, right? Imagine watching that backpack on Cheryl's back. I watch her walking and standing taller as she is. We are able to walk alongside of Jesus to do this great work. And at first our shoulders are burdened with this heavy load. And as we decide what to let go of and what to hang on to as we walk further and further into the light of this work, walking taller and taller because we've let go of the things that burden us. Friends, that's our goal of this vision, this work, to figure out what we need to let go of, both physically and emotionally and spiritually, what things disallow us from doing this great work? What things do we want to do going forward as a church, as a congregation? And what things individually keep us from coming together as an individual? I know that spiritually, I have things that I bring to my spiritual director, my therapist, whatever. But coming together as a community, that's what Jesus is asking us. We cannot come into this work hanging on to, and you probably can't see my arms because of the green screen, with these huge loads that dig our heels in so deeply that each step is so heavy. Lightening the load, checking or carrying on. Friends, the burden is lighter if we can let go of some things. Amen.